Hello and welcome to Bike Social. You join me, Michael Mann, here in Tenerife, where Triumph has brought us out to ride the brand new 2020 Rocket 3. Now, two models in the range, this is the R, which is much more of the roadster style, and then they've got the GT, which is a bit more touring. Uh, the telltale points are with handlebars swept back, and it's got a, a pillion backrest as well. That's the easiest way to, uh, to look at them. 19,500 pounds for this version, the GT is 20,200 pounds. All right, let's join me on the road to see how it looks from my point of view. Yes, welcome on board. Triumph Rocket 3, and of the two models, the R and the GT, I am on the GT. And you can tell, A, because of the colour, and B, because of this kind of more touring style handlebar setup. 294 kilos is the dry weight. And do you know what, in all fairness, moving it around at a car park, and getting it down and around these corners. It doesn't feel like you're maneuvering too much. It's actually really well balanced. Now this is an entirely new motorcycle from the outgoing bike, including an all new engine, two and a half liters worth. And the claim is 167 PS, which is about 165 brake horsepower. And the torque figure Check this out, 221 newton meters, which is madness, but brilliant at the same time. Because you can roll around in any gear and just pick up the throttle and the bike drives. I can take this corner in sixth and you've still got, you've still got enough oomph to get open away. It's a bike with a hell of a lot of character. It feels like you're so involved in it. Um, like a storybook in a way. There's some bikes that are just not that exciting. You get on it and you're bored. But this thing, three cylinders, two and a half litres, so, so much motorbike. Full brake. Rambo style of real top spec brakes, you know, front and back. And they're linked. Have a front brake in the rear, and you get a bit of rear brake in there too. It's nice to use the rear brake on a bike like this. I don't tend to be much of a rear breaker, but it settles them out nicely into these type of corners. You can run a bit of corner speed, but you don't want to be too too crazy. You've got an awful lot of motorbike, you've got an awful lot of tyre. 240 section rear tyre on this. Uh, and I made my Avon especially for this motorbike. Engine braking's tidy. I mean, I'm in sport mode. Of the, there's four rider modes on this. Interchangeable on the fly if you need to. And each one you can personalize to a degree. You've got a uh, rain, road, sport, and then a rider mode, which is your, is again, your full personalized riding mode. But so much of this bike is interchangeable with the R model. Fly screen, seating layout. Where you can see that we're above the clouds. Quite a spectacular view. It's the quality of the finish on this bike that uh, sets it apart from many others. And the detail that's gone into it, it's, it must have been a project that's taken years to develop. With the, the amount of detail that's gone into. And things like all the wires are hidden within the handlebars, so you've got none of that kind of clutter. It just keeps it nice fresh. And there's a lot more of this bike you can personalise too. You can, you can adjust the peg position. Uh, there's three different verse, three different peg positions on this, which comes forwards and backwards, as opposed to on the R, which is two positions up and down. By the time the Vikes are in dealers, which will be just into the new year in 2020, they'll have completed all the development work on the Bluetooth module. So you link your phone via My Triumph app, which is free, and you've got My 
module within the electronics on the bike allow you to sync your Bluetooth so you can have phone display, you can do music, that was still displayed on here. Uh, sat nav, you can operate your onboard sat nav from, from the screen, from the, from the dashboard. Using the switch gear, these switch cubes here, all illuminated, backlit. You've got your five-way, uh, sorry, yeah, five-way joystick, up, down, left, right, and then in. So you can operate that, and then um, it's got like a GoPro setting on it as well, which I think is the only bike, uh, or, um, well, the only manufacturer where you can operate your GoPro. So you, you, you sync your GoPro up, and you can operate it on, off, and all the different modes you get on a GoPro again through the through the dashboard and through the switch gear. Can't go into this over these corners too hot. You're still going to get the bike stopped and stopped and turned. And this kind of weight is likely to run on. Described by Triumph as a muscle bike. And yeah, looking at the stats, it would be because it's a it's the world's biggest production motorcycle engine. And with those power and performance figures. You could easily describe it as that. But it's not too in your face. It's not aggressive with its performance and power. You don't you don't think you're manhandling all sorts of craziness. It's actually really smooth. It's nice to have all the power though. And like I said, it's got so much about it that's enjoyable to, to ride. It makes it enjoyable to ride it. You, know, you feel the engine beneath you, you can, I'm not saying it's vibey, you just feel part of it, it's got soul. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, it's the Triumph Rocket 3. Now, as is typical with Triumph, you get a lot of accessories, and a lot of the parts on these two bikes are interchangeable. So things like the backrest, you can have it on the R version, the foot pegs are movable, um, three ways you can have them different on the GT, so you can move them forwards or backwards. Uh, the R, you can move them up or down. And then again, you can switch them around if you really need to. And this bike's got 165 brake horsepower. Uh, now, the max is at about 6,000 RPM. And it's got the highest torque of any production motorcycle you can buy. 221 Newton meters at 4,000 RPM. Three cylinders, obviously, being a Rocket 3. Doesn't they look beefy? So muscular, so much presence on the road. And you really feel that when you're riding it as well. You get the idea that it's a big muscular thing. Dry weight for the bike, 291 for the R, 294 for the GT. Now, once you add all the, uh, the wet stuff into that and then rider's weight as well, you've got, you know, you've got a fair amount there, but you've got a lot of torque, a lot of power. And then the dynamics, so the geometry of the bike has been arranged in such a way, developed in such a way that it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a behemoth to shuffle around in the corners. Quick shift is an option, up and down. Don't think you'd need it. I think because it's this, this type of bike, doesn't, it doesn't feel like it needs a quick shifter either. It, just, it needs to be a bit more, I don't know, down to earth, a bit more manual. Don't get me wrong, it's still got a you know, fair old electronics package in here, all hidden away, six axis IMU, and this TFT dash is something else. And there's umpteen different things you can do with this, um, with this screen. You can start moving around the different displays, you know, auto contrast, different themes. So you can click that, you've got a quartz theme, Kronos theme. You can choose whether you want to have these sections down here hidden. Uh, and then all you need to do is just have a quick tap on the, on the old joystick just here and it, and it springs back into life and then automatically goes away again or if you want them on show at all times and then you've got all the usual bits and pieces. And it's movable as well. So if you think you've got a bit of sun glare, just move it up a bit. If it suits your riding style. This is a bit of a fiddly thing though, this joystick. It's really intuitive, like, you know, in terms of operating the TFT display, you can up, down, left, right and in. But it's so close to the indicators. The amount of times I've tried to indicate with a joystick, I've never hit the horn yet, but, but when you've got summer gloves on it was, uh, which i did have today it's still a bit of a trick if you want to if you want to press the joystick down you need to get in there and click it down it's a bit of a fiddle especially when you're on the road and you're trying to concentrate 
Uh, the heated grips on this are, are an optional extra on the GT, it comes as standard. 18 litre fuel tank, they're claiming around 41 mpg. So, so many bits and pieces on here. Hill hold control, cruise control, cornering ABS, cruise control options. There's a USB charger under the seat. And do you know, it's got a whole lot of character. It's, it's when you're in neutral and you twist the throttle, the whole bike just, it almost like it twists. And that's part of the character of having a, a big engine like this and a shaft drive too. And that kind of speaks volumes of, of what the bike offers you as a, as a, as a whole package. It's an in, such an involving motorbike to ride. So I often talk about them being a motorbike out there for everybody and there's people who are going to absolutely love this Rocket 3 as soon as you get on it. Equally for those people who aren't so sure, it's a chance of getting on it and getting to know it and then you might well fall in love with it too. It's, it's that kind of bike that's, that's going to kind of get hold of you. When you get on it, it doesn't feel as big as it might look or as tricky to manoeuvre in you know, tight spaces. Oh I mean, yeah, it's still big, it's still gonna be a bit tricky, but it's not, it's not abnormally large. It carries its, its weight very low, it's well balanced, and there's a good turning circle, you know, lock to lock. Probably its main rivals are gonna be along the lines of the Ducati Diavel, uh, or some, a couple of the models from the Harley range, or even that Arch, the Keanu Reeves one, the KR GT1, um, potentially, I mean, it's a big price difference, but in terms of, you know, a, a big, thunderous, muscular roadster uh, with big, big presence, uh, then they're kind of along the same lines. Look, the Rocket 3's got a, a brilliant history. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of people out there who, who really enjoy this kind of motorbike. And now it's been upgraded and refined and it's a lot, lot better for 2020 with all those electronics, with its look and its feel, it's the weight saving over the previous model. There's a lot going for it. And yeah, it might be expensive, but you get a whole lot of money. I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's the kind of bike that's like an investment uh, and you're going, to be, you're going to have it for a long, long time. And, and if you want to accessorize it, make it you know, much more personalized, then Triumph have got the accessories in abundance. I felt really quite connected with the bike today. Um, you, you get familiar with it quite quickly, quite easily. You know, and again, on the face of it, all those electronics, the TFT display, all the different bits and pieces that are interchangeable or customizable might be, again, it might appear overwhelming, but you can easily get familiar with the bike and you can concentrate on really enjoying it. It handles really well. You can't go barreling into too many corners and want to scrub off speed. I mean, thankfully there's cornering ABS in there to, to save you a little bit because you know, to transfer that weight from side to side or even get into a corner and, and want to then turn tighter, it's going to be a bit trickier. I mean, look, it's got a 240 section rear tyre, for goodness sake. And, and a whole lot of grip as well. Even riding without traction control on the thing just, just, just sticks and holds. You can't, with a bit of encouragement, of course, it'll slide. But in terms of its ability to get from A to B uh, in a very smooth, comfortable way. And smooth is a good key. Smooth is a good word to, to describe the, the ride-by-wire throttle. It is well connected, despite the size of the engine and the three cylinders and the shaft drive. It'll you know, count against it in terms of its on-off, the throttle sort of lurchiness. It, it kind of cancels all that out. Again, in, in, in the way that this bike has been developed, it's, it is a smooth bike. And the brakes are terrific. Uh, there's Brembo Stylema brakes. The way in which the rear suspension works, I mean, following another rider today was really interesting so you could see how that rear suspension was, you know, the, the, the swinging arm was almost independent and it was soaking up all the bumps and the rider didn't look like they were jumping or jolting around at all. Put a couple of panniers on this or a, or a, a bit of luggage and you'd be able to go for miles. Um, 18 litre tank, 42 miles to the gallon. You're probably going to be pleased with the brake when it comes to filling up with fuel again. Uh, I, my, I don't particularly get on with roadsters in terms of comfort and I much prefer the GT version um, than the R, in if I was going to be riding for a long time, 
but the R was really good fun. So that's more of your Sunday blast kind of bike. You know, you go out for a few hours with your, your mates and you start hurling that around and you kind of got that much more aggressive seating position. It involves you. It's a lot of fun. So there we have it, the Triumph Rocket 3, ready and waiting in dealerships in the UK, end of Jan, early Feb. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you can read the full review at bikesocial.co.uk.